What is that sound? What is that sound? That's not the weekend. It's not the sound of the weekend. That is the sound of... Was there any music playing while I was dancing there? There wasn't at that point. There wasn't at that point? Okay, we can hear it and we can fix it in post. That's the sound of... Hashtag Daily Crowder. However that works, coming at you. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, gosh, sorry we had some technical difficulties. We are glad to be with you, though. Uh, Man... What a long year, what a long process it has been. For those watching right now, let me tell you, louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. You can start your free trial today. Today we have Gary Sinise, Sean King, tomorrow Dennis Miller, more guests to come throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Thursday show is always free. Tonight we're doing this stream for you so you can get a taste, a little bit of a taste of Daily Crowder uh, for free on a Monday, YouTube and Facebook. But from here on out... um, once a week, you can get. But if you want to support the Daily Show, you got to join the Mug Club. So you can do that seven-day free trial at ladderwithcredit.com slash Mug Club. Plus, you get Mark Levin and Mark Stein and Michelle Malkin, and it's good stuff. Isn't that right, Naka Jared? It's very good stuff. Good stuff. We are finally here. Finally here. We're finally here. You can see this whole new studio. I have a new MacBook, which, by the way, keeps asking me for a password every time I go in. So a lot has happened in the news since we last spoke. Um, let's talk about this first. We'll get to Meryl Streep and Sean King in a second. <laughs> So really everything else is we just have to kind of skim along in order to get to Meryl Streep. Russian hacking, that was a big thing. Uh, we'll have the Russian hacker actually on tomorrow's show alongside Dennis Miller. Wow, let's catch. The Intel report came out this week, uh, finally, and this is what the left was waiting for. They were really upset about you know this, this, uh, this anti-patriotism, people uh, in the right apparently in Russia's pocket. No new info. No new info at all that came out. There is nothing that ties the Russian hacking to tampering with the election, certainly not voter machines, uh, none of it, zero percent. As a matter of fact, here's some things that we do know. John Podesta received a phishing e- – here's the problem. D- Democrats, I get it. Listen, if Russia tampered with the United States election, yeah, I have a problem with it. I'm not a huge fan of Putin either. Anyone who – and listen, if you're a conservative out there – you probably shouldn't be yourself, right? You can't be mad at Justin Trudeau for wanting to jail people for hate speech and wanting to ban it and then be cool with Putin who jails dissidents and people who are his political enemies. Have a problem with that. I understand he's looking out for the interest of the Russian people. Not a huge fan of Putin. Don't want him tampering with the election. However, Democrats have been dumbasses. The DNC have been a giant wallowing uh, uh, oodle, gaggle. I don't know what kind of terminology we can use here. A school of dumbasses. What, what, what are dumbass? Is it school? Flock? School? Flock, maybe a herd. Maybe a herd maybe of dumbasses, like Gallimimuses. Yeah. I'm going to go with herd. They do travel in packs. So uh, here's some things that we do know. He needed to reset his password. DNC staffers incorrectly told him that that email was legitimate. He responded to the email to reset his password. This is like my grandmother who has her office set up just for forwarding. Where she sets it, she's like, hey, here's a picture of Prairie Dog's testicles. Thank you for sending that from your old Yahoo account. But I didn't need to see that. Uh, And then there's a claim by Assange, which we don't know if it's true or not, um, that his password was password. (laughs) Uh, We don't know if that's true or not. I can't verify. But the first two things are true. Phishing email. uh, Also, I think he needs to send his fortune over to a uh, Nubian prince. What what was that used to be? Was it... Was it... uh, Which... Nigerian. Nigerian It's always Nigerian. Watch it. Watch it, Jordan. See what happens when we let him here on the mic? It's got ugly fast. Uh, Jerusalem attacks happened, but that's no surprise. Uh, So people don't want to talk about that. You know, here's one thing. People are getting mad about it. This wasn't really an act of terror. It was an act of war because they did attack soldiers, which is a rarity. So good on you, Palestine. You didn't just stab people at a mall because because they they, they spoke a little bit of Hebrew. But um, Israel has offered a two-state solution. Look at the Hamas charter. They will not accept the two-state solution. They want a one-state solution, one where there are no Jews. This is why this will continue to happen. And we send out what? We send out our Secretary of State who admonishes uh, the state of Israel. I know where you line up. I don't want American soldiers going off and dying for Israel. I understand what you're talking about, but there's one place in that entire cesspool of filth and sadness in the United... Not in the United States, sorry. Outside of the United States in that sphincter of the world we can say that right I think sphincter. sphincter if god were to give the world an enema he'd put the hose in the middle east mm-hmm. and um there's one place there where you can where you can be muslim and uh not be persecuted where you can be a woman and actually um have a trial for rape fairly and that's in israel and so when it comes to that and they start getting stabby hamas with the jews because maybe a nose is a little too long that's the only reason I have a problem with it. Okay, let's get to the Meryl Streep. So we had to just cover the news. Mm. Meryl Streep, this is the real story today. Meryl Streep went up at the Golden Globe. Was it Golden Globes? Uh, There's so many. Hollywood Foreign yeah. Press is Golden Globes. That's right. Um, and 
She gave this speech. Now, first, let me let me set the table for you why this really matters, because this is kind of a perfect crystallization of the era of Trump uh, is Meryl Streep's speech, namely that it is predicated entirely on a lie. See if you can spot the lie. Roll clip. So Hollywood is crawling with outsiders and foreigners. And if we kick them all out, you'll have nothing to watch but football and mixed martial arts, which are not the arts. First off, how arrogant can you be? Which are not the arts. All right. Uh, let's get to why Meryl Streep sucks in a second. Uh, first off, no one wants to kick out foreigners. My mom is... An, have you heard my mother? Not gay Jared. You've heard... I have. Everyone here has heard my mother. She speaks with the accent and sounds like George St. Pierre, okay? Love her to death. She's a first-generation immigrant. Learned the language, right? She favored Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. No one wants to kick out foreigners, so that's the lie, right? But see, again, this is what happens. Same reason that Black Lives Matter can kill cops. Same reason that these Black Lives Matter activists feel okay kidnapping a special needs white person and scalping him. Why? Because you vilify your opposition. If you say, well, they hate foreigners. Well, nobody likes somebody who just hates foreigners. Nobody likes someone who's simply a racist, who hates people because they're brown, right? Well, those people are subhuman, so now you can treat them subhumanely. So Meryl Streep will then go on to talk about violence and respect when she just vilified an entire half of the country as racist, xenophobic, pick your phobic of the day. Then she says mixed martial arts. Am I the one who found that remarkably I curious? I thought I laughed so hard. I'm like, she clearly has no clue what she's talking about. I've never there, seen the sport. She probably did a Google shirt, uh, search to see what ended with arts so that she can <laughs> attack it. Uh, do we have so a Hugh Laurie bit? Uh, I don't think we do. She, we she do. stole her exact joke from Hugh Laurie. Here's yeah. a, if you're going to pick a sport... To vilify, along with all the people who you disagree, don't pick the single most international sport there is. <laughs> I mean, I guess outside of soccer, if you want to talk about gay guys with pink jerseys and man buns. But out of the champions, I think there are, there are either eight or nine or ten champions in the UFC. Yeah. More than half of them. Let's, let's, let's roll it. Let, let, let's roll it. What do we have? We have Amanda Nunez, lesbian Portuguese, Irishman, black, black, uh, kind of black, Englishman, Tyron Woodley. So we got Tyron Woodley, black, Daniel Cormier, black, uh, Jose Aldo, Brazilian, Conor McGregor, Irish, Michael Bisping, Englishman, Amanda Nunez, lesbian, Brazilian, angry lesbian, Brazilian. Yeah, Lord. Oof. You know, Meryl Streep wants to, wants to curry favor with the progressive crowd. I guarantee you, Amanda, Brazilians do not take this lying down. She's got to fight for Meryl Streep, who's talk bullshit about me, and to fight this my arch. Your arch bad. Your arch, you do death becomes a bad arch. Meryl Streep, so anyway, she did this. Um, she goes on to, let's roll the next clip about the principled press. Okay, this brings me to the press. We need the principled press to hold power to account, to, to call them on the carpet for every outrage. The principled press. We're t I don't know if she's talking about the Hollywood foreign press here or just the press in general. Bri are we talking about Brian Williams, who lied about the copter ride? Are we talking about Dan Rather, who took part in forging documents? What principled press are we talking about? Are we talking about Walter Cronkite, who said you can't be a journalist and not be a liberal? What kind of principled press? The press that agrees with you? Otherwise, they want to kick out foreigners? So this is what they want to set up, right? Anyone who disagrees with them is fake news and the principled press. By the way, isn't it funny? Isn't this funny where we talk, we're all worried about patriotism now, right? In the era of Russia. If you, if you want Russia to hack the United States election, you're not a patriot, right? If you don't want foreign outside influence. The Hollywood foreign press? How much worse could it get? Outside of the fact that you can bribe them as seen by giving nominations to The Tourist or whatever it is, whatever the newest Angelina Johnny Depp fiasco is when he's not beating the hell out of women in the back room in his trailer. I said vegan. All of a sudden, someone comes up with a black eye. They have to talk about how Captain Jack Sparrow got the wrong kind of spiced rum. It's a story they have to tell on set with Johnny Depp. My point is he's an ass. Um, the Hollywood foreign press. Is there anything more influential than the media, than the entertainment industry, than Hollywood in the United States? And she's sitting there talking about how the Hollywood foreign press is beautiful and principled. I think we have, um, after this, right, yeah, that's right. And, but after when she said the whole thing about principled press, I, I threw up all over my own lap and forgot who I was for a second. So I, I can't really go entirely into more there. With Donald Trump, his responses are quick. Now, it was pretty predictable. Can anyone guess what he said about her? I'm going to guess it was very not nice. She's overrated. It was very not nice. nice. Ding, She's ding. not good. Yeah. Do we have She's that terrible. interview where he responded that he thought Meryl Streep was overrated? Do we have that? Yeah, here we go. He talked about how Meryl Streep, one of the most overrated actresses in Hollywood. Now, 
I will grant you this. Donald Trump overuses the term overrated. I, I'll give you that. He said it about Seinfeld. He said it about Meryl Streep. I think he said it about Arnold. Uh, he said it about Hillary Clinton. He said it. He said it. He pretty much says it about everyone he doesn't like. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. He's not a man with a very diverse vocabulary. Okay, but allow me to presuppose this here. What if um, Meryl Streep is simply overrated? Now I've been saying it for years. I know. I know now. Donald Trump's going to make it okay and cool to say it, but. Um, for those of you who doubt it and need videographic evidence, I present to you Exhibit A, Meryl Streep's overrated. That's exactly the sort of thing that I'm very interested in learning how to do. Mm. There's a fire within my soul. You bastard! Oh! Mary! <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the best and brightest that Hollywood has to offer. Uh, listen, I, I know I, I've always been in a minority here. I'm glad because every girl you've dated, if you dated a girl anywhere in that sort of mid-2000 range, The Devil Wears Prada was their film. Yeah. And back then it was just two people. Like, I was like, Anne Hathaway and Meryl Streep. I don't know. I, I can know. take two and a half hours of that. Probably did you catch... Did you catch Vince Vaughn's reaction? That was oh, first, yeah, oh, first yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get that. We I want to have that on a we loop. Just here, Vince Vaughn and Mel Gibson. <laughs> Look at their face. That's a playing video right now. Yeah. Vince Vaughn, just, just nothing. Mel Gibson, he's running his voicemail through. said, look at that form-fitting dress that you're wearing. You deserve to get taken advantage of. Um, Vince Vaughn, by the way, for those of you who don't know, he was actually a guy, he was a big fan of Donald Trump. He's a libertarian, he's well-known, he's a big fan, not a huge supporter of the unions in Chicago, right? Because they go in there and they make some bad decisions. So Vince Vaughn, well-known conservative. Um, Mel Gibson, well-known psychopath, also known to not be a huge Meryl Streep fan. This is everything that's self-important about Hollywood. Uh, something else, too, is their stance on guns and suppressors. We'll talk about that after the break. I know you're thinking silencers, suppressors. Shut up. We'll explain. Subscribe to my club if you don't want to fudge. I punch and kick your face for seven day free trial. And with, with the my club, drink coffees and cheese. Or cheese, like black cheese, or green cheese, with milk. Join now! It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Come cheer up, my eyes. Come cheer up, my eyes. It's better to have loved. I need some more juice with that. You guys had that playing. It sounded like crickets humping. It did. What, what are you guys? You guys are off your daily show. You're off your game. I don't know what's going on. Not good. has been fired promptly. Uh, something else that's making the rounds today. Have you all seen this? Donald Trump Jr. I will say this. Donald Trump Jr.'s sons, I think, are more likable than Donald. I think that's fair. Um, as far as in the public eye, people who have... Oh, and I've talked about this a lot. You don't want to rest in the laurels thinking, hey, well, we won the election. Well, Donald Trump did lose the popular vote. Let's be honest. So that's a good thing. That means there's still a lot of convincing to be done. If you want eight years and not four, uh, I get it. It's fun to watch people collectively lose their minds. I enjoy mm -hmm. it as much as the next guy. But you do need to, at some point, start doing some convincing, um, start presenting some compelling arguments. And I think Donald Trump's sons, if you watch some long form videos with them, who's the one who looks like the, the Whoville? Which one is that? I always confuse them. There's the blonde. They both kind of, but one yeah, has dark hair, one has blonde hair. Eric Trump is the blonde one, I think. Right. Yeah, the one who looks actually more like Trump. Right. One that's... of them looks like Gordon Gecko. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, and that's how the left perceives him. Either way, I think, I think he has two sons with four different mothers. I don't even know how that's possible, but it, it's a thing. It's a thing with Donald Trump. I do think his sons are a little more palatable to people who can't stand Donald Trump himself. So his son was in a lot of hot water because he wants to uh, basically make suppressors, silencers for firearms more accessible. And so we wrote about this at LadderWithCredit.com. If you've actually seen the, uh, seen the story, uh, the tweets were absurd. People, we, oh, Donald Trump now wants to make murder silent. He wants to make it easier for criminals to be able to assassinate people. And Naka Judd, you're actually more of the firearm enthusiast here. Do you think there's any issue that's been more um, sort of convoluted than the, than the silencer suppressor issue? No, it's up there. I think, I think people just have this idea that it's like 
it is the James Bond gun going around people sleuthing in the night, just whack people off in the silence, never going, you know, every murder going unsolved. And it's just not. <laughs> and you're painting someone's pecker in gold. That yeah, usually follows. In real life. That follows. I can't believe those films got away with that. Yeah. The, the stuff that they did when you go back and watch it, it's not even suggestive. No. Bushy Galor. That's not even, that's not even, a th first off, nowhere in any language does the name Pussy Galore come through as a valid name. I've looked, I've no. searched through the phone books. No, the phone books are not I there. I can't believe that made it through back in the day. You know, it was like, it, it would be like suggestive where a towel would fall off. Yeah. And yeah. there'd be a steamy shower. And then the next scene, Pussy Galore. <laughs> I mean, there are children in this theater. Um, we're going to get letters. So, okay, let's get to the suppressor points. First off, first point, if you're saying don't use the word silencer, it's a suppressor. Actually, when it was invented, the guy who created it called it a silencer. The biggest manufacturer of these items calls them silencers. So please hold your douchebaggery. I know you're going to have some tactical people on. It's a suppressor, technically. Either term is fine. Um, here's something that's interesting. Obviously, we have way more firearm ownership in the United States, and people in Europe they look down, you know, they they, they look down on us. They, they they have a problem with it. But suppressors, silencers, when they aren't a politicized issue, people don't even consider it something that would be uh, offensive. As a matter of fact, in the UK, you look to Scandinavian countries; they're far ahead of us on laws with suppressors and silencers. It's actually considered rude not to use a suppressor or a silencer, certainly with a rifle when you're hunting. Mm -hmm. If you have the ability to, it's kind of expected of you. So that's something that's important to note. People think the United States, we're the land of crazy guns, God, and freedom. Well, guess what? We're behind on this. Now, I'll only give you a few reasons why. Um, the reasons they should be used, first off, suppressors. It's not, it's not for assassination. It's not for Corleone-style assassinations. It is for uh, protection. It's really for health reasons. If you shoot someone, if you have a home invader situation, um, you're going to suffer permanent hearing loss, very likely. It's incredibly common. Um, and uh, not only that, but people who hunt, since they have to be aware of their surroundings, they often don't wear hearing protection. When you're not at a range, a suppressor, a silencer, is an incredibly valuable tool. Um, I think a lot of people think that these things will be used in assassinations. I think Jordan pulled these clips because they think, like you said, it's a James Bond film. Yeah. This comes to us from, who, who did this on YouTube? Jo Jordan, do you know? I think it was Military Arms Channel, who we have this clip to show you. It really only reduces the sound of a gun, for those who don't know, by about 20 to 40 dB um, on the high end. So let's roll this clip so you can see the difference between a non-suppressed uh, firearm and one that is. Let's set aside some myths. It's at 160 dB. Go. 160. Go. I guess we're not seeing the video. I'm just hearing gunshots yeah, in my head. That's now. 160 That's dB. 160, and then this is That's 130. 130. Go. Okay, so you hear Go. that? It doesn't exactly sound uh, like a field mouse. And I think Jordan has a chart up there that we can bring up. Um, Really, if you take that that level, and I think it's about 130 dB or 140 dB and higher is permanent hearing damage, right? That's what that yeah. is. Scale it back a little bit. That's what a suppressor provides you with. So it's just enough to keep you from uh, bleeding out your eardrums, but um, it's still about the sound of a loud rock concert. So this idea that people are going to go off and assassinate people in the streets or cops can't track them, it's completely untrue. This is why they were made, uh, they were classified that the, the way that they were. Um, and, and, and it's predicated on a lie. Democrats now want you to believe, by the way, Daily Kos even wrote about this, why suppressors should be legal. Uh, le they are legal, but you have to go to a class three firearm dealer. Um, they were actually outlawed during the Great Depression because they didn't want people poaching big game. And a lot of people would argue the Bernie socialists, that it was the sort of the bourgeoisie who wanted to live in their high towers and didn't want poor people to be able to fend for themselves and kill deer. I don't necessarily subscribe to that, but it was entirely to do with silent game hunting and illegal hunting and poaching. It had nothing to do with crime. There's no statistics to show you that uh, mm -hmm. somehow how long suppressors would increase crime. And uh, add all this up, and by the way, that's why this is the current process for purchasing a suppressor. We have this up right here. It's not an easy process. It's about the same process as getting a uh, fully automatic firearm. They've changed the laws recently. Here's the point. You add all this up, and what is it? It's an issue that wasn't politicized until a son yeah, of Donald well, Trump. Um, oh, what's happening there? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a Skype call coming in. Oh, do we have a Skype call coming in? Is that Sean King? Yeah, I think, I think we have Sean. King. I think we have Sean King. Do we have him? Is he I think, there? I think he's there. Is he there? Um, I wish I could say uh, I was happy to be here, but I felt it was a necessity. So you know. I, I guess congratulations are in order first for your new uh, gig in 2017. How'd you get the job at the Young Turks, by the way? 
Yeah, well, I wish there was a better story about it to tell, but uh, in actuality, I just happened to be in the YouTube lobby. Uh, I, I guess that's so. as good a reason as any. Um, it, it, it's, it seems like a good match. The Young Turks deny the Armenian genocide, and you deny that you're a white guy. Ha. You're both living in the same mm-hmm. parallel universe. Ha. You know, that's funny, right, for a white supremacist like yourself, maybe. Uh, but no, they don't really do background checks at TYT. Plus, I think they just like the idea of hanging out with a black man. So, But Sean, yeah. you're not... You're not black. You know that. You're not a you're not a black man. Yeah. I, how did I know, right, Stephen, that that was going to come up? Uh, your factual inaccuracies are outrageous and litigious, uh, and they're just factually not factual, Stephen. Uh, my mom was white. That's correct, but she also happened to be like a really big whore, and I don't know who my daddy is. So I could be whatever. No, you know. Sean. No, we do know. You, here, we have pictures here. Not good, Jared. Let's bring this up. Uh, we have pictures of you as a child, as you can clearly see here. That's, that's the first one. That you're is. not black. That um, that hair almost looks strawberry blonde, frankly. Uh, and here, you're you're clearly also not black. And there you are in your your teenage phase. Like cabbage patch dolls from the forties. And. You throw your mom under the... How do you throw your mom under the bus like that? Sean, there's nothing less black than trashing your mom. Even rappers will shoot someone with one hand and hug their mom with the other. I, 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 I don't know what you're thinking. You're clearly not a black man. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a part where you, the white man, tells me what a black man should be? Like, I shouldn't be calling my mom a whore because, what, you want the black man to dance for you? Like, you're, what, like I'm your house? white black guy do all right well sean here's something else we know that on the police report you filed the notorious report claiming you were the victim of a hate crime um you checked we have this up here a box indicating that you were caucasian and why are you flaring your nostrils what is that don't do that what is always with the flaring of the nostrils in every in every picture i don't know what Okay, if the literal photographic evidence uh, isn't enough here, um, we have some more pictures that would certainly insinuate you are likely not a black person. Uh, This is circumstantial. Here's a picture of you at a high school swim meet. Yeah, I Um, I was pretty good. You know, that that, uh, you look actually good form. Uh, Here you are skiing in Aspen. My f***, that was Crested Butte, bitch. My apologies. And here you are uh, at what appears to be a Nickelback concert. Okay, see, that photo is a damn lie. I would never be caught dead at a Nickelback concert. It was Creed. Yeah, uh, uh, you know. Okay, so uh, were the Young Turks your first choice? or how did, how did you end up there? What was the progression, Mr. King? Yeah, well, you know, I have long respected the Young Turks and their commitment, you know, to journalistic, like, integrity. Actually, he, like, he did apply to... Other places. Now, see, there you go with your lies again. You know. Well, in, in Sean's defense, not gay, Jared. He, how would you? How would you even know? Well, you played. You played here. A lot louder with Crowder. He had. He applied here. Yeah, I got. I got his application. You have his resume. Can we bring it up? Yeah. Um, let me bring the screen. Uh, Sean. Yeah. You know what? I did, in fact, apply at louder with Crowder, right? Simply as a social experiment regarding systemic white supremacy and congratulations you did exactly what i thought you would do you know you you showcase classic racism xenophobia biracial phobia your guess is as good as mine race phobia homophobia but, but wait 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 sean you're you're gay like i could be so truthfully though without trepidation like i just put that there as a test you know to hedge my bets and to make sure Dad, my f- I done told you, get out the frame. Yeah, I want some chocolate milk. That still sounds nice. You know? Okay, Sean, that's uncomfortable. I hope you find what you're looking for in life. Sean King, everybody, we have Gary Sinise coming up next. <laughs> Do not join the Mug Club or be enticed by Steven Crowder's offer of a seven-day 
free trial, it may sound meticulous or it may sound attractive, but it is filled to the brim with white supremacy. I've been to louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. I've seen it. I've seen it. All right, glad to be back. The dancing is embarrassing because I admire this man, and uh, that's not usually a problem with most of our guests. If you see him, you know who he is. Honored to have him on the first daily program. Uh, GarySiniseFoundation.org does some fantastic work. Mr. Sinise, thank you for being with us, sir. Thank you, Stephen. Good to be with you. No, I'm, well, look, did you hear the way he sat, said that? It sounded so dejected. So, like, yes. It was a necessary good to be with you. That's that's how my that's, wife that's he, he, he got the script assigned. the beginning of the interview. <laughs> <Good to you. laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is what they, they, they have to say. All my answers are written down right here in front of me. Yes. Well, that doesn't work so well with this show because some curveballs get thrown. Uh, you know, I've known you for a while, and if at any point you want to disassociate from what I say, you can say, no, it's not true. Um, you know, little known fact, I was actually introduced to Gary by, um, let me set it up, Andrew Breitbart, when I used to talk with him, would always say, if there were one person who I could get to run for president of the United States and I could get everyone to vote for, it would be Gary Sinise. <laughs> and he would say that all the time before I ever met him. He was the one who introduced us. And uh, it was it, there were two people I was ever intimidated to meet, you and Clint Eastwood, because I didn't know what to say. And you were very, uh, you were needlessly nice. Oh, well. Uh well, I was uh, happy to meet you. I'd seen some of some of your videos. You're hilarious. I, I, was, I was glad that An Andrew brought you to, uh, to lunch that day. Yes, yes. Well, uh, Jared, we can edit that out. We don't want him admitting yeah, that he, he's a fan of anything that I do. Yeah. That won't that, that won't do anybody any runner. favors. <laughs> um, so you know, you you you've done so much, obviously, in 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 film and television. That's where a lot of people know you. But now you're effectively doing. Uh, Almost full time, from what you were telling me, your foundation, the Gary Sinise Foundation dot org. Um, for people who don't know, well, let's let's run a clip for people who don't know really quickly and kind of fill them in. He wanted to be able to do things for himself. He didn't want everyone helping him in every aspect of his daily life. So many live in total reliance on caregivers for tasks most of us take for granted. Those are the things that I look forward to having that the ability to be more independent. Our RISE program was established to provide these heroes specially adapted smart homes, mortgage-free and custom-built from the ground up. To go out and buy a regular house, I can't do that. With well, Garrison East Foundation, I can plan for the next 20, 30, how many years I'm blessed with. And uh, you well. can see the full promo. We'll have it up at louderwithcrowder.com. We posted some of these and had an incredible reaction. You know, a big part of what you do is building smart homes and using technology with a lot of, of uh, you know, veterans who come home. You're kind of like the only sort of Bob Hope of today. When I think of who is closest to Bob Hope, I think of you because you've done so much of this work. What was it that put that on your heart to do something like this and with such specificity, you know, incorporating technology in a way that's more than a photo op? It's it's incredibly pragmatic. Well, um, gosh, it, it's uh, I got involved with veterans back in the, the 80s uh, in the Chicago area. I grew, grew up in Chicago. I have Vietnam veterans on my wife's side of the family. And I've got, uh, let's see, my grandfather served in World War I. I've got two uncles from World War II. My dad served in the Navy. There's lots of veterans around me on my family side. And then, um, you know, I was, I was uh, a senior in high school in 1973. That was the end of combat operations. Mm -hmm. in Vietnam. I had to register for the draft, but the draft was over. Uh, and I can remember that, you know, I was uh, scared about the possibility of getting drafted. Um, it was the, the war was going badly. Things weren't going well. I wasn't, but I wasn't thinking about too much about what was going on with our Vietnam veterans, I, even though they were on television every night and right. the casualty reports were terrible. And and then it was a few years later when I met my, my wife and she introduced me to her brothers who both had served, her sister's husband, yeah, a Vietnam veteran. And I, I, my eyes kind of opened up to what they had gone through. And so I started working locally with some Vietnam veterans groups in the Chicago area, trying to support them and help them. And then eventually I played a Vietnam veteran 10 yeah. years later. And 
I was going to say, I wonder if that bought you some loyalty with them because Lieutenant Dan is such an iconic character, you know, or if you show up, even if you weren't there, even if you weren't obviously uh, a veteran in that sense, if they immediately sort of identify with it. Because it does seem to, you know, Lieutenant Dan is one of these characters. It's a rarity. In Hollywood, veterans seem to be either portrayed as one extreme, you know, born on the 4th of July, complete objectors, or then, you know, complete heroes. You know, you have like uh, Act of Valor, films like that. It, it seems like it's needlessly politicized in the entertainment industry sometimes. If you bring up even the word veterans, people line up on one side or the other. And it, 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 I don't understand it's one place where it seems somewhat polarizing when you can just do a lot of good. Well, what was interesting about the Forrest Gump character, the Lieutenant Dan character, is we had never before seen uh, a Vietnam veteran who could get over the, the, the service part of his life and the, and the difficulty that he had coming home Right. And actually be successful. It's a good point. Life. And Lieutenant Dan is, is he's a rich guy at the end. He's got a successful business. They've invested their money. Uh, he's getting married. He 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 comes for full circle. Right. Is able to put his war years behind him and move on. We hadn't really seen that uh, depiction of a Vietnam veteran uh, prior to that. We'd seen a lot of a lot of Vietnam veteran uh, focused films. Right. But never before have we seen a, a, a guy come home, go through the obvious uh, and expected anguish and anger and stuff of losing his legs and being discarded right? Uh, uh, you know, from uh, society and everything like that, as so many of our Vietnam veterans had. But there, on the other hand, there were so many that came back and were able to move on with their lives. And, right. and that was Lieutenant Dan. We were able to see him put that all in perspective and move on. And that, of course, is the story that we want for everyone who serves, especially you know, folks that get injured. We want them to be able to, to move through that and be successful. And that's, that's one of the things I've tried to do with uh, starting a, a, a nonprofit and trying to help our veterans. And, and that's a great point, actually, about Lieutenant Dan. It seems like people, certainly in the entertainment industry, they say, well, you know, if you make a film seem too, page, it's needlessly patriotic, and then you're encouraging, you know, sending our kids off to war. And then there's a flip side. Well, if you if you deal with PTSD at all, you make it seem as though they're, they're too weak to handle it. And, and you have these two factions. Like, listen, it's a reality. A lot of troops come back, whether they're injured, whether they're wounded, or they have PTSD. But a lot of them, having had a lot of them on this show, both active and veterans, like most of them... Uh, move past it because they're strong people. That's a big reason they're in the military. And they tend to be pretty successful. And that's a story you don't see with a lot of... Remember there was a spell? I don't know if you remember that, Jared. And in the inter There was like uh, redacted and, and rendition and just mm -hmm. really there was a spell of really anti-military films. Yeah. I don't know if you remember this, Gary. And none of them made any money. But it seemed at that point like it was much more purpose and agenda-driven than even profit-driven. There was a, a spell there where it was like nonstop. Yeah. Yes, that was uh, that was in the, at the height of the Iraq War back in two thousand four, five, six, seven, eight, right around in there. There were a, a whole series of films that came out uh, redacted, as especially it was rough, despicable. But, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know why make a movie in the middle of the Iraq War that shows you know how brutal a couple of knuckleheads can be? Right. Uh, that that really uh, offended me. I mean. Uh, it was based on some true events, but why make that picture when we still had 150,000 troops serving in Iraq honorably and trying to do the right thing and uh, serving their country? So that's one of the reasons that the GI Film Festival uh, started. It popped up uh, 10 years ago. And uh, Laura and Brandon Millett, who started the GI Film Festival, were felt very similar to me, that they, they, were, they were feeling... Uh, you know, very badly that so many movies were being made depicting soldiers as people that were either crazy or couldn't function or uh, whatever. And so they started a film festival to highlight, you know, service work, service oriented military films that really showed our troops in a, in a, in a positive way and serving honorably. And, the, and then the entertainment industry doesn't necessarily... I got very involved with the GI Film Festival because my mission at that time, I was going to Iraq during that period. I was visiting with our troops. I was seeing what they were doing. And I saw a lot of people serving honorably. And I would come home and talk about it on television and radio and wherever I could and just try to try to counter that, that message that was coming right. through our media that everything was going terrible and the troops were all 
like the ones that were serving at Abu Ghraib, who you know mis mistreated some of the prisoners there. They were getting all the headlines, and nobody else who was I serving remember that. honorably was. Yeah, I remember Abu Ghraib, and I, I did. I, I haven't done as much as you, obviously, but I, I went and entertained the troops. I remember Guantanamo Bay was a real eye opener for me because it was not what we had been sold at all when I went. And of course, you know these they're, they're consummate professionals, right? The troops there were like, well, we can't talk on camera, but. And they would have these stories. You know, there was a lady who came in and had a cocktail thrown in her by a terrorist. Cocktail, by the way, for people who don't know, is any bodily fluid you can put in a jar and throw it at the woman. And she was actually, boom, you're out because she threw a glass of water back on a terrorist who threw unspeakable things on her. And they would say this stuff off camera. They'd be like, you know, we wish we could, we wish we could reset it. You can see it's not what people think, and uh, but we can't. You know, this is our job. We got to go and keep our head down and do it. And so it's important for people like you who who have a voice to be able to speak up because a lot of people don't realize how tied their hands are um, in speaking out. And it's their, their 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 perception, the perception of them is entirely almost how the entertainment industry and media depicts them for many Americans, um, for better or worse. Yeah, you know, uh, there was a movie that I got involved with back then called Brothers at War, and it was a documentary, and it showed family life in the military, and it was a buddy of mine who followed his two brothers over to Iraq who were serving in the in the Army. And it really just, you know, it, it, it wasn't an anti-war movie or a pro-war movie. It just showed military life of a military family and what they were going through during this particular time serving right. in, in, in Iraq. And uh, it was, uh, I actually called the GI Film Festival up and said, let's get it into the festival. And it did very well. It actually got a very good um, uh, run in the theaters. Yeah. It had a television run. And it, it really sort of countered that sort of military person that was being depicted uh, in Hollywood at that time. I was disappointed with some of those films. But, you know, I mean, people can make movies. Yeah. They're, they're, they're movies. And, uh, you know, the Forrest Gump was made. And what was interesting about that is that it, it showed how brutal that war was. Sure. It showed, uh, you know, a catastrophic injury. It showed what it was like for that service member, Lieutenant Dan, to come home and what happened to him when, uh, you know, he came home to a nation that had turned his back on our Vietnam veterans. But that yeah. also there was life ahead and that they could move on beyond that injury. And that's what we want for everybody who's serving in the military. I'm very, very involved with the Disabled American Veterans Organization. Uh, they actually uh, brought me to their convention in 1994 when the movie came out, and I've been involved with them ever since. My foundation supports them. Yeah. Uh, and my foundation kind of grew out of out of this this mission that I've been on to support our veterans through various nonprofits and by volunteering for the USO and going to the hospitals and raising money for different charities and everything eventually it just manifested itself into the creation of my own foundation which is a, a part of my my mission my overall mission to to serve and give back service work there's nothing like it I mean it's yeah. uh, it's been a, a great blessing to me I felt kind of called after September 11th uh, to to use what I have to, to do some good. And that's uh, that's been a blessing. And, and not to cut you off, uh, GarySiniseFoundation.org. But for people who watch, who are watching right now, it was hard to get Gary to come on here. It's like pulling teeth to get him to go out there and talk about his foundation. He's a guy who does it in quiet. You kind of learn a lot about a guy uh, mm -hmm. in how he acts when people aren't looking. The guy could ride off into the sunset, do whatever he wants, and he's still doing this. He's still helping and very, very hands-on involved. So I know you can't necessarily sing your own praises there, Gary, but I'll do it for you. Speaking of Bruce, Brutal, you have to be the judge, uh, celebrity judge here of our dance contest. You know about this. Um, yes, I, I've heard about it. Yes. <laughs> I apologize for what you are about to see, but thank you so much for taking part. Uh, not gay, Jared. Let's 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 get this going. Gary Sinise, celebrity judge. Gary Sinise, celebrity judge. All right. So, Gary, we had people send in their Crowder dance moves for going daily uh, to bumps on the program. And we, we told them that you would be the one who decides the mega prize. Not gay, Jared. Do he's able to see program, right? Uh, he's able to see the dance moves. I just I realized. Think so. OK, let's make sure he's able to see these dance moves so that in all of their splendor, Gary can decide which one deserves. Give me 10 seconds. I can make sure. He sees OK, them. Gary, I'll give you I'll give him 10 seconds. This is, see, Gary, this is what this is why when you're on the first show, um, half the staff gets fired. 
And then if you come back for the second show, this is true. It's never the same people twice. Um, this, is, this, is, this is what what happens. So Gary Sinise Foundation. I heard you're going to have Dennis on. Huh? We're going to have Dennis Miller on tomorrow. Uh, and that's another issue where either he's going to Skype or we may just have him do a landline. Um, and then uh, I think we have. Can you see that? What's that? Oh, there you go. You and Dennis. Yeah. He uh, I used to do his show uh, actually when he was out there and uh, it was one of that's my favorite shows. Point. Look at that. Look at that. We should have had you on together. It could have been, uh, could have been like all a, magical. Could have been Bing and Danny K going on, where uh, we could have had Sinise and Dennis. He's done some stuff for the troops, too, actually. I believe he's done some USO tours, um, as many comics do. Funny enough, for a lot of comics, left or right, they just do it. And, and that's one issue that kind of brings a lot of them together. I've seen tours with, like, Kathleen Madigan, I think, and Nick DiPaolo. So you've had left, right, centrist, and they just go down there and, uh, and entertain the troops and sleep and... Not great living conditions. No. So, okay, Gary, we're going to come right back. Jared will be able to get you the dance program because these people will be brokenhearted if you don't pick a winner. Uh, GarySiniseFoundation.org. Thank you so much, Mr. Sinise. We will be right back. Right, Jared? Right. Otherwise, he's right. not going to rehire you. It's not going to happen. He's not going to rehire you at all. Is my mic on? There we go. Stephen Craig. How often do you hear me do live reads? Very rare. The hosts, they sell their soul for any live read. We do it a couple times. Maybe. I don't know. Not that. Maybe not even maybe. Maybe not maybe. Uh, listen, we appreciate you watching. I know there have been some technical glitches tonight. But um, listen, we've had an overwhelming amount of support for the uh, CRTV right now subscription daily. The Mug Club. Lotterwithcredit.com slash Mug Club. Right now, there's a seven-day free trial going on. Um, so today is free. Thursday is always free. Still on iTunes. Still on YouTube. The daily articles at Lotterwithcredit.com. But if you want to watch the daily show, if you want to watch this grow, you know, today we have Sinise. Tomorrow we have Dennis Miller. We have some other big names coming forward. Um, but if you also want to watch us hire new people, uh, names in the lineup, people who you watch on YouTube, people who you love and support. Here's the deal. YouTube, social media is squeezing a lot of people right now, particularly voices of dissent. You know that, particularly voices of dissent on the right. So uh, we want to get as much content out there, make it free as often as possible, but we can't be reliant on it. And uh, just since people have joined the Mug Club, not Gay Jared's been here for this. Remember when it was just you and I? You and I for a long time. It was time. just you and I in a den. Yes. Uh, because it was syndicated to radio and it was based out of that little Ann Arbor, Detroit station. Yeah. And now in this room, we have uh, uh, we've expanded the hires. We've doubled them since the Mug Club has launched. So we have Jared, Edward, Jordan, Scott, uh, Lacey, Francine, Aaron, and the site. We have Courtney, Casey, Brodigan. Did I already say Corey? Corey. Corey. If I'm missing anyone, I apologize. But we've been able to expand, employ people. And by the way, we're not talking about Fight for 15. They're all making good livings, a good job here on this show, creating content for you. If you want to see it, keep growing. If you want to see the content, uh, the quality get better, just subscribe. If you're a student, enter in student. Military, enter in military. If you're a veteran, enter in the promo code veteran. It becomes $69. That's less than $6 a month. If you can't afford it or you can't do that right now, we appreciate you anyway, and we are happy to give you the uh, the once-a-week free show and all the clips. So lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club right now. Only right now, seven-day free trial. You can decide if uh, the Daily Crowder Show is for you um, or if you hate your country. And uh, maybe you're a xenophobe. I don't know. I don't know. But I would encourage you, to, I would encourage you to subscribe. But you could, you could hate America, too. So. That's the sound of the final segment. That's the sound of not Gay Jared being dead, perhaps. You're going to keep going with that? You're going to Daniel Day-Lewis that thing? <laughs> I'm not dead. You're you really getting dead. the character. Uh, wow. You, you, look, you look worried there. You look worried. I did, look, I did look, look worried, worried for a second, but that's namely because that chair is expensive, and I thought I heard something break. 
Um, uh, thank you so much for being with. Listen, uh, I know a lot of people really like the wrap up segment that we do in the once a week show. So it used to be three hours. Now we're doing an hour every day, four days a week, actually. And then Not Gay Jared has his own show with Courtney. Mm-hmm. And uh, behind the scenes access to ladderwithcrowder.com. So it's changing a little bit. We'll do some extended segments on Thursday with your calls. We have the ability to take your calls now, reading your tweets. And uh, those closing thoughts are going to be once a week because it's kind of a a culmination of everything that occurs during the week. But I will tell you this. Right now, I think this week it's going to have to do with elitism and um, Meryl Streep being an awful human being also an overrated actress. Emma Thompson would have done it better. Always. Always go with Emma Thompson. She said, even as like Nanny McPhee, like, this is terrible, but I, I buy Emma Thompson doing it. I know people are going to say she's to the left. I don't care. I'm just talking about acting ability. Meryl Streep sucks. Emma Thompson, good. Uh, Gary, oh, sorry. Gary had to go. Yeah. Uh, Gary's an important guy. <laughs> Gary's an, he's obviously big name. Really great guy. I'm so glad Andrew Breitbart, um, mm. the man, not the trademark, introduced us, was uh, the, genuinely one of the nicest people I have ever met. And uh, as Andrew always said, if, if Gary ran for president tomorrow, I would vote him in, but he yeah. was very patient. We couldn't get these clips I up hope, for him. I hope our, our show doesn't ruin his, his, his up-and-coming potential success in, in life. Well, with Sean King, that's a distinct possibility. A distinct he's, a, possibility. he's a tough act to follow, uh, namely because the act is fraudulent. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of Andy Kaufman. People don't know if you're pulling yeah, a joke yeah. on them, only it's, it's he's the dude dressed as a dude, dude disguised as, as another, another dude. dude. Mm-hmm. Um, he's Caucasian is Reach. the point here, ladies and gentlemen. I do do try and keep up. So we do have some dances. We had this. We had hashtag Crowder Dance Moves. We gave away, we're giving away 50 free mug clubs this week. 50 free. Not a free day trial. Not a seven-day trial. 50 free mug clubs. And then the one winner we're going to pick tonight. We've narrowed it down to three. Gets not only a mug club for himself. He gets a full merchandise package. Mm-hmm. A lock of not gay Jared's hair so he can be framed for serious crimes in the future. And uh, a private conference with us, which you can take, but you don't have to. We can also we to. can also just have Ruben do it because you might like that better. So we've narrowed it down to three. Do we have the top three dance yeah, top moves? Three. You guys sent in hundreds of your dance moves. Uh, here is candidate huh. number one. Let's see what it is. Oh, child labor is always a crowd pleaser. It is. How many are there? What are they, Mormon? Distinct possibility. Okay, so that was cute. A lot of people using their kids and dogs, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But this was the most creative use of children. There was one with gu- dogs and guns. I thought it was going to be possibly a winner, but it was a small dog. So I had to give uh, it no, no, no. plus five for guns, yeah. like negative 55 for Yeah, a, you can't, you know, small, homosexual small dog. Okay. Um, that was pretty good. Okay, that's candidate number one. And you can yep. tweet us, uh, tweet me at Esquire or tweet at Not Gay Jared, and we're going to pick the winner who we think is best. Here is number two, which I thought was actually pretty creative. Uh, let's roll this clip. Okay, he's digging. He's doing the pogo dig doing dance. Doing dig. It's good. Yep. Tosses the sh- Wait, what's he doing here? Oh, what's going? No. Uh, oh, 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 waterboarding! What? What? Don't even. Here's the thing that's funny about that's that. That's so much of the answer that point. You can see while but... he's doing that dance and getting, even though it's a fake waterboarding, he immediately regrets the decision. Do you see him like? Yeah, it's all. So just like his face, oh, like oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. What did I do? Oh, no. oh, this lock of hair better be worth it. Hint, it's not. Jared's lack of hemoglobin makes his hair brittle. Um, we have one more yeah. entry. One more entry. Did we save the best for last? I think we saved the best okay, for last. Okay, let's see who the winner is. Oh, he has buddies in on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is awesome. Is that Kevin Smith in the background? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. At X Lankix, uh, you win. You win. You get a mug club. Actually, we get a mug club. Let's get a mug club out for all of his buddies there, too. That was fantastic. That was really creative. By the way, he can maybe teach you how to use a TriCast. Could I saw one I in there. I saw it in there. In there in we'll be calling buddy. So X Lankix, uh, Lankix, whatever. Thank you. You have mug clubs coming your way. Merchandise package and uh, lock of knockage your hair. And if you want to do a conference call and get on and talk to us about what well, you don't have to. That sounds so self-important. But people ask for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, sorry we couldn't show all the dance moves. We really appreciate the output of support i cannot tell you how happy i am to be with you every night we want to be the show you go to bed with we want to be the show where you can hear about the news but laugh unwind and um hopefully have some great guests and great conversations despite the technical glitches tonight the upgrades come with glitches tomorrow we have dennis miller and uh the russian hacker 
I think, right? Yeah. Is that what we have? Yeah, that's who we got. Are we confirmed? I'm confirmed. I'm confirming as we speak. Dennis Miller, we yep. have him for sure. Real Dennis Miller, not like Sean King Dennis Miller. And the Russian hacker, tomorrow. Thank you so much. Get your seven-day free trial. Ladderwithcredit.com slash muck club. See you tomorrow. Dennis Miller, Russian hacker. Love you.